this is Sarah. I hope you are all doing well. I am trying to do a video on DTC and uterine fibroids. It's a very complicated topic to talk about and I'm talking because I feel now it's the right time. I'm gonna tell you the whole journey that I went through and I'm pretty sure the scientists in me will want to tell you also some kind of facts or give you some papers or some literature that so that if you have the same condition you can also uh, check them out. I watched a ton of this kind of videos, personal stories of uh, uterine fibroids and other people's journeys and I thought that it's, it's okay also to share mine, although I am very careful in sharing medical stories over the internet. I want to do this because uh, uterine fibroids is a very common condition and, it, and because if you look at the statistics often you find out that they affect almost 80% of the women so at some point in a woman's life this might be the case and this is why I want to share this this part of my journey and yeah it's very uh, connected to my DTC journey and if you don't know what DTC means it's trying to conceive so I can't split them I thought then I all put them in the same video if you know a little bit about me you would know that I have a daughter I had her when I was 28 and then I turned about 32 33 so when she was three exactly three I start feeling that I really want another baby. I did a video to explain why we can't have babies now and it was because we were in an unstable kind of condition which was the summary of the video, although I can link it below for you. And this is where my mind was then. But when I turned about, when my daughter was four, I think we started kind of occasionally trying, we were scared to try. But occasionally we would try, nothing was happening. At the same time, I also was highly anemic. The doctor would say, maybe you have heavy periods and that's it. And yeah, that was the explanation, but nobody went further than that. Until I, after six months of occasionally trying, I knew that a couple of times it was very on time, the occasional time with the trying. So I said to my husband, something might be wrong, so it's best if I go and check to the guy with, with the gynecologist. On that occasion I also asked to get scanned, because uh, uh, otherwise he didn't find anything. But then he told me, well, you have two uterine fibroids and they are six and four centimeters, so quite big. And he didn't explain much more and then the question, do you want more children, started coming up. And it's a scary thought because yes, of course, I want more children, but they kept asking me, so... And there are two reasons why they ask, because the treatment is different if you want children or if you don't, but also because it gets more difficult to get to have children, or it might get more difficult if you have especially large fibroids. This is how my journey started, and uh, if you don't know what exactly fibroids are, in a nutshell, from how I understand it, is a benign tumor. The first thing that you need to know is where they are, and uh, they there are three main kind of uh, fibroids, depending on the, their location. If, you, if the uterus is like a triangle, they are in the inside of the uterus, they are subcosa, and these kind of fibroids are very uh, limiting for fertility. You have a high risk of losing the baby. So the best thing is that you the best thing that you can do is to remove it and nowadays it's very fairly easy to remove them and you don't think anymore about them. That's the best course of action. The thing is that these are very rare so you won't have most likely you won't have these ones. The other type is uh, on the outside of the uterine molds and this is also fairly easy to remove. What yeah, the, the worst thing that can happen with these ones is that they twist. So there is like a connection here and if they that twists it hurts. These do not typically interfere with uh, fertility that much. So it depends what the doctor is advising you to do. You can do either way. I didn't have these ones. I have the third type, which is the most common one, is the intrauterine, intramural, sorry, intramural uh, fibroids. The uterus has this wall and the, the fibroid starts growing in the wall. It's like a ball that starts growing and can grow very, very big and very large. 
But what happens is it starts growing, it starts deforming your uterus. So it, it can go the intrauterine cavity, it can go like this, the ovaries can move a little bit. So the fertility aspects might be more difficult in this case. Um, despite they can interfere with the mechanics of getting pregnant, I also found out that intervening on this fibroid, it wasn't that clear that it improved fertility. Although this is like the traditional course of action, what the doctor will tell you is you have to operate. You should operate or if they are small, they only uh, keep looking how they will develop. But mine were six and four, so the doctor said you need to operate. My camera keeps dying, so I keep repeating myself and probably it's like all chopped, but uh, let's, let's hope that it continues registering now. The doctors often suggest to operate if they are big and if there, are sus there is some reason of concern. Um, I, will, I didn't agree with operate, to operation straight away. In my mind, the main concern was uterine uh, abruption after you get pregnant. Sometimes it might happen that, especially if you had microsurgery, uh, they don't, they can't close it very well. The, the well, where they cut, they can't close it very well. And I, I found out that there is some research to say is that well, sometimes the uterus explodes, and that scared me. Um, it's like a very low percentage, so it just, I mean, it shouldn't scare everybody, but for me it was something concerning and I focused only on that and the reality is that there are other things to consider and the doctors don't tell you. One is that once you operate, at least 50% of these women in 2-5 to five years will have again fibroids. And this means that the window of fertility is very short in a way and they might interfere worse because it's not the same the same place that they grow because they have removed that type of fibroid but because the, your uterus tends to produce them the same kind of error genetic error might create in another part of the uterus so I'm get another they may grow and uh, if you have big fibroids and multiple fibroids you're even more likely to grow them so operating, as they suggest, is not always the best course of action unless the fibroid is large and how, how large, I mean, it depends. But there is also another thing that they don't tell you is the uterine scarring. So when they operate, especially the intrauterine, intrauterine uh, fibroids, are those things that grow in the wall. So what happens if they cut the uterine wall is that they marry the intrauterine cavity and here you have a scar because they they kind of uh, repair it, but then you get the scar and you, you might be not able to get pregnant or have miscarriage. This is what scared me a lot, or this is how I understand it, by the way, I don't, I'm talking like as if I was an expert, I'm just, because my background is a researcher, I read a lot of research papers, and I wanted myself to make the right decision. If you are in this kind of situation where you want children, they offer several treatments, one is operation, and that is myomectomy. You preserve the uterus, but they remove the myomas. And this can be done with microsurgery if you if they are in the right location and if they can if they are not too big. Otherwise, they do like a C-section, and then they get into the myomas, remove them, and uh, repair the scar. Mine were big, so they said you need to have an abdominal uh, myomectomy. Um, it's scary to me to have that, but I, th I thought first I don't want surgery, I first want uh, medication. So the medical treatment that they offer is some sort of hormonal intervention and what I chose to do is um, ASMIA. ASMIA is like the newest treatment that they, they can offer, at least for Europe. Um, it has, yeah, we, we can talk about this treatment another time, but um, it's very promising and uh, it reduces the size of the myomas quite considerably. 
And I told to my doctor, I want to try to reduce the size and then try for a baby. And he said, I agree, you do that. So I go three months on this heavy medication. After that, he found out that he said that he sees only one myoma now and it's four centimeters. So it looked like they have reduced. But he was very negative. He said, if you try, if you get pregnant, you will lose the baby and you should have an intervention. And so he was very kind of, he alarmed me quite a lot. And at that time we were moving from Switzerland to the Netherlands. What he told me is to find a very good uh, person to operate, who can do the operation. And that's hard to do if you think about moving and uh, going to a new country and finding which one is the good doctor to to have an operation in a country that you don't know, you don't know anything about the health system and so on. So this kind of put me in a very strange position. I, after six months that I had stopped the treatment, we had not been trying or not as much at least. We, I think we hardly tried because of what he said. I went again to the doctor, to a doctor in Italy that I know very well. He helped me with Emilia and I thought he might help me again. He said, well, they are back to the normal, the previous size. One is six, maybe seven centimeters, and the other one is four. So he saw both of them again. And what he said is, you should try to have a baby with this condition. And the reason now he said it is because if you, if you you don't know what kind of uterus you end up with you should just try first and if it doesn't work then you can think of other ways but at least try first and this was his advice and we tried uh, we tried for I think it went up to eight, eight months well I think after six months or so I went again to the gynecologist. So I scheduled another appointment this time in Germany to see a professional uh, doctor in the hospital. And they said, well, you have at least two, but I, I think one is like with many clusters of fibroids, so you have more than two fibroids now. They had gotten a little bit bigger. She said, the doctor who visited me, she said, you need to operate. Normally, as she said, if it's four centimeters or less, I would say it's okay also to try, but at this size, she said, it's best to operate. She said we can get anesmia again and then uh, reduce the size a little bit and then you can try the operation. And she also advised abdominal, so like a C-section kind of operation. As scary as it sounds, by this time, well, trying to conceive had not worked that worked that much, and yeah, it depends how you count it. But at least there were six to eight months trying actively, and then previously we had tried two, so it was a long time. Uh, my daughter is was six by this time, so and if you think at four, we started occasionally trying was this two years of waiting for a baby, seeing my period come, trying multiple pregnancy tests, scrutinizing them, throwing them away <laughs> because my period would come and feeling such a lot of grief. So it wasn't a short process. We kind of knew it's not possible. It can't be possible. And this is when I said, well, maybe the operation is that the, the thing that I've been fighting, but it maybe this is the way. And by that time, I had also seen that uh, going for IVF was an option because when you have multiple fibroids, these are unlikely to work. And some clinics, they won't even accept you if you have multiple fibroids. Getting pregnant with multiple fibroids was difficult. And by this time, I also knew that having surgery with my condition, so intramural, uh, fibroids it wouldn't make a lot of sense but doctors were suggesting that and there was not much choice left in my mind 
The last thing that I wanted to try was some sort of natural pot. And by the way, the last time I had a visit, what they said is they're going to do an abdo abdominal surgery, wait some months that I heal, they would go with the microsurgery again to check that all the scarring uh, has healed well and if it doesn't have, if, if that's not the case, they would sew me again. So just make sure that every, every scar is healed very well. And afterwards I would try for a baby and most likely I would have a C-section. So in front of me I had three surgeries at best. And also uh, possibly I wouldn't have been able to have babies and that was scary. <laughs> and what I wanted to try the last thing, some sort of natural path and see if diet would do anything or if I needed some supplements or something that, that was in my power and uh, for this I went again in doing research and I will keep this out of this video but um, so for the purpose of this video I decided for the surgery and while I was waiting I would do also these things in the hope that I'm going to improve a little bit although I knew that there is a strong genetic component in this condition so it's hardly would hardly have made a difference. So this was all for today. I'm gonna uh, continue this video in another time. I have some videos coming which will kind of uh, give you also the continuation of this story. Um, yeah, um, I hope you don't have to deal with this condition at any time ever in your life, but I know that most of my public is uh, female and uh, it looks like the odds are against us, so and it's surprising how little research is done in this type of conditions. They don't even know why this condition starts in the first place. And also there were some other interventions that I didn't mention in this uh, video. And one is the uh, ultrasound focused uh, MRI, is something like this, which I con consider highly because I saw that there is some research uh, that explains that after you have this kind of intervention many women were getting pregnant but what the doctor said to me is that yeah, you need to wait 10 years to know if that's the case so if you go in that way it's kind of a risky path that you are taking if you have any questions, if you want to share anything with me I'm, I'm very glad when I, when I hear other testimonies I'm very glad to um, to see people who made it or who whatever you decided or yeah if you were in this condition I just wish you all my best um, it's hard con it's not a hard condition per se but it's hard to make a choice um, this is how I was guided by research mostly and also I had three doctors from three different countries giving three different opinions and uh, the, one, the one that I trusted most was the Italian doctor um, but yeah thanks a lot for watching we will resume this video soon and yeah thanks a lot for watching I'm glad I share this with you. Talk to you in the next video. Bye-bye.